Hi everybody, this is Mike from RGBHQ.com. Sorry it's been so long since there's been a video and the site's been a bit quiet over August. Uh, Rob and I have both been very busy with our respective lives. But to make up for that, I'm going to endeavor to try and make some more tutorials. Um, probably a lot more based on the Foundry products, but if anything else comes along in Cinema 4D and Blackmagic, etc., I will put a video up about those and we will hopefully have a busy winter. So to start, this is a Modo tutorial based on some work that I was doing over the summer. And this is a way that I found to quickly uh, UV some stairs in Modo, uh, mainly using the UV edit tools within Modo itself. This is a very basic staircase and we have here some stairs all repeating and it's very low poly i'm not going to kid you this isn't the world's best mod modeling job but we have a texture and we can use this as a basis for some of the more advanced modeling and it may just do for the low poly modeling the good thing about this was this was generated from some awful photography by yours truly um there's one oh nice shoes and there's the other so i'm just going to show you the workflow for how I came to get these stairs together and you never know there might be some tricks in here which will be of use so let's get started. So here we are in a basic version of the scene that we were just seeing. Um, the model is not textured and um, doesn't have any UVs. Nope, the base does and We'll ignore that, that's from the other the base does, but the stairs do not have a UV. So, nope, all very, very basic. So, let's just concentrate on working on the stairs. Now, I've just double clicked on one polygon and then that's selected everything else. I'm going to I'm going to select back square brackets, which on the keyboard is beside the P key, to select the edge polygons, and I'm just going to hide those. You can see that I don't have any backing on these stairs. It's just all very simple one plane polygons. And I just, I, to make these, I just made a cube, cloned them up, and then stretched, cloned them up, stretched, blah, blah, very boring. Okay, so now we can make a UV map for this. So we're going to call this stairs UV strikingly original. We are also just going to unhide and just show a really neat little trick within Modo. Um, you probably know about this already, but so I've just selected the stairs by double clicking and it's selected all the polygons it's connected to. So that's great. And down here you can see that the default material in my statistics list is selected. So I'm just going to select that and that selects all the materials in there that are the default material. So I just double clicked again press M and I'm going to create a new material called stairs. And as you can see here, we have a new material. So I can now use that to select that material. I can now do that and just call that stair low, stair edge. Okay, great. So, but we don't need those polygons, so we'll hide them and we'll go to UV mode right then. I found that what worked best for this was UV projection tool. There's a raft of UV projection elements within Modo. You can use Atlas, sometimes Barycentric is very good for just creating one polygon in the entire UV space. But for this one, I found planar work best and I just hit on that and did, well, let's just see what we've got. It wasn't planar, I don't think. Yep, as you can see, planar is not the option that I wanted that's doing that. So, doesn't matter. We are going to just use the unwrap tool instead. Bang. And there we go. Now this is the beginning of a good UV. So we are going to orient and we're going to create everything to be horizontal. And we'll just check that we've got elements selected. Yes, we do. That's great. It's all the right way, but you can see it's all slightly wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press the rectangle button, which is a new feature in Modo 901. And just 
and that straightens everything out for me, which is lovely. And now, what I can do, which I think I'll just spin this round. So that was the Y key, and then just I had con finger on control, double, oh, W to scale, down with a new V space, that's great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, because in the original model this is two flights of stairs running up, I can make these UVs on this side cover the same space as the UVs on this side, so I can have a nice efficient texture. So I'm just going to select the bottom, loop, and that does that in UV space as well. And I'm now going to, so with the transform move in the UV space, making sure I've got tear off selected, just pull that over and you can see we're getting a red, which is exactly what we want. That means we're overlapping our UVs. And so if I was going to put this out to another program, I may not, such as Cinema or Maya, I may not overlap the UVs, but if I'm just working directly within Modo, I overlap the UVs a lot. It makes for a much more efficient uh, workflow if you're just di working directly within Modo. You, um, but it's trial and error as to how your application will support that. So I'm just going to take out these elements here because they are going to get in the way of my next bit. So again, just tear those off, pull them over to the side and we can deal with them all later. And oh, so now just this bit's a bit boring. We just pull them up, select and pull. I'm not that bothered about being too neat at the moment. Select and pull. Again, if anybody has any better ways of doing this, please let me know leave a comment either on our YouTube video or on rgbhq.com. Another way to have done this potentially would have been to just UV the base there and then build it all the way up. But this is a good get out of jail option if you haven't done that like I had forgotten to do. And also sometimes you find that the model kind of evolves and you're in a modeling workflow and you just model, 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 model. And then the next time, the next day you come back to it and you think, right, today I'm going to be just UV, UV, UV. Well, I do. You may be different, which is probably very healthy for you. And we're moving up here. Having said that, this is still not a slow process although it is quite repetitive. So coming up here. Okay, so now I have all my stairs nice and neatly, well, not that neat, um, bundled into one little space. So I'm just gonna go into edge mode and just press that button, get them all aligned in that space. So whilst I was doing the final stairs, I remember scenarios where this kind of technique can be very useful. If you were doing a lot of working with CAD applications, such as AutoCAD or oops, MicroStation drawings, and you're having to import models from architects, this is exactly where this kind of technique can come in very handy because those models tend not to be UV, as I've spent a large part of my career sobbing apart about. Um, right then, so we now have all the risers and all the treads. That's great. So now, just maximize the UV space. One, R. bit smaller. Oh, in fact, you know what we should do? We should do the same with these guys. So let's, that one. Just 
to keep everything proportionate, what I'm going to do, just put that into top view and just project from view. And because I've only got these polygons selected, and yeah, that's now proportionate. And I did that by clicking in the preview window rather than the UV space window. And so that means that as I reposition these ones down into the same space, there won't be any twisting or foreshortening, hopefully, within the UV elements of these specific islands. So let's just move that down there. Again, you can see how quickly it is. You can either select your UVs in the UV window or when that becomes a bit problematic, as it would do here because we've got overlapping elements. You can just select them in the main window. So I'm going to just pull that across. Select those guys and make them approximately the same size. So we just fill this up now to be the same size of the UV window. So I'm just going to pull out these edges just to maximize UV space. And again, using modal means that all of this is flexible when we, at no point in the UV process with modal is everything ever really set. You can go back in and tweak and pull and yank and do whatever you need. So now I've got my UV ready. I'm just going to export this out to Photoshop to use this as a template. So texture and export UVs to EPS. And that is ooh. the great new project setting in Modo is really useful for just um, creating an organized folder structure, something I can be very remiss about doing. So when you're starting a new project, just go up there, new project, and it will create all those folders for you. And if you start to create um, your images in the folders as it's defined, um, you'll find that you can move these folders about between machines really simply, and Modo keeps a good record of where everything is, and there's very little file refinding. OK, so shut off. So back into Photoshop. Uh, images, Star CPS. Uh, switch it to pixels, oh, 2048. Uh, switch anti aliased off, that's good. There we go, and you can see the lines of our UV. If you can't see that properly, I'm just going to put in a white background there. Oh, flip that behind. UV layer. Okay, great. So now comes the Photoshop part. So I am going to just take that chip, copy into, say this is a PSD. This is a tutorial, so it's not going to be there. We go. So I'm just going to chop 
Is this guy? And it gives me more control over the tread. helps if you copy the right layer. Copy paste. Get everything straight. It's always amazed me how many 3D artists that I've come across who say, oh, don't use Photoshop. I can't understand how in a world of doing what we do that, that you could ever not use Photoshop because it is just so handy, for, especially for this kind of work. That is very annoying. That little, warp, that little skew there, so just... There we go, that's a bit better. The other thing I'm going to do with this, by the way, is leave this as a PSD mode. I can cook PSDs absolutely fine. Um, and it means that I've got a lot more scope for editing the image and doing back and forth changes. I need them, so I'll just do a quick rough clone and if, oh, turn my opacity up. Quick. All right, now we'll just grab, say, man. This chap. Copy. Put him move. Straight. Let's bring that down there. Get rid of that little. Straight. Yeah, that's pretty good. So. I may use a program like bitmap to material to do this kind of cloning work normally but for the purposes of this tutorial as I said we can come back in and clean up if we need to if we keep everything in the PSD format 
as you can see, I made a right bodge on that, but I was just sample. Let's do a three by three, uh, five by five. And I don't fill foreground. Oh, good. Amazing what cheating I actually get away with. Right, so we will switch that off. Again, we can come back and have a look at that and how that works, but we will just save that as our texture. We'll go back into Modo and we will go to our shading. There's our stairs. We're going to add load image. And that now fills up the UV space exactly as we wanted it to. And as you can see, Okay, so as you can see, that's done a pretty good job of lining everything up. Uh, that bottom edge isn't brilliant, so we can go back into Photoshop and just make sure that is our bottom edge and just apply the warp again. Pull this guy up. And pull him down a little bit as well. Black line. And we also just maybe just clone. using the warp. Back up a bit. So you could be here all day if you wanted, but just save that and go back to Modo. And it goes, oh look, reload changed image. Yes, please. There we go. Much tighter edge. So we'll just unhide our stairs and we can just maybe I'm not overly happy with the way that this element's looking so I am just going to mirror those and that should give me yep, a nice edge. And there we go. As I say, I mean, if you were working and doing this for a feature film, and this was a hero asset, you would want to spend a lot more time on it. But, and also we would work out in the cloning on those stairs, but I hope that you can see this is a good way of using Modo to your benefits as an artist, even if you use other programs such as Maya or Cinema 4D, especially Cinema 4D, the UV tools in Modo, I spend a lot of my time just any sort of severe modeling that I would need to do in cinema, I would switch that over to Modo and I find that the Alembic and specifically the Collada files are very good at getting textured Modo assets back into cinema. 
and vice versa. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more questions or tutorials that you would like to see more of, please let us know either in the comments for this YouTube video or on rgbhq.com. This is Mike and I'll speak to you soon.